let's start today's episode talking about DNA evidence. Now, everybody knows DNA is the building block from the human body. Virtually every cell contains DNA. The DNA in people's blood is the same as in their saliva, skin tissue, hair and bone, and it does not change throughout a person's life. That means that the value of DNA evidence is a powerful investigative tool because with the exception of identical twins, no two people have the same DNA. Therefore, DNA evidence collected from a crime scene can be linked to a suspect or can eliminate a suspect from suspicion. Properly collected DNA can be compared with known samples to place a suspect at the scene of the crime. In addition, if no suspect exists, a profile can be entered into the DNA National Database to link serial crimes. DNA evidence can become contaminated especially when DNA from another source get mixed with DNA relevant to the case. For this reason, investigators and laboratory personnel should always wear disposable gloves, use clean instruments and avoiding touching other objects when handling evidence. It's not just human error, environmental factors such as heat and humidity can also accelerate the degradation of DNA. And that's why we use paper bags to store items so that an item doesn't get wet or moist in plastic, which does allow for bacteria to grow and therefore destroy DNA evidence. Now, biological evidence should always be thoroughly air dried, packaged in paper and properly labelled. Handled in this way, DNA can be stored for years without risk of extensive degradation, even at room temperature. So how do we test the DNA? Well, the most common form is called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. Now, PCR can analyze evidence samples of limited quality and quantity, and the process makes millions of copies of very small amounts of DNA. It enables the lab to generate a DNA profile, which can then be compared. Now, there are three types of results that can occur in DNA testing. That's inclusion, exclusion, and inconclusive. In conclusion, when the DNA profile of a victim or suspect is consistent with the DNA profile from the crime scene evidence, the individual is included as the possible source of that evidence. However, the strength of inclusion depends upon the number of loci, that's locations on the DNA strand, and how they're examined, how common or rare the resulting DNA profile is in the general population. Exclusion. When the DNA profile from a victim or suspect is inconsistent with the DNA profile generated from the crime scene evidence, the individual is excluded as the donor of the evidence. However, exclusion does not imply innocence. And in the court case, there should be other parts evidence that would also build to a case. And finally, inconclusive. Inconclusive results indicate that DNA testing could neither include nor exclude an individual as a source of biological evidence. Inconclusive results can occur for many reasons. Uh, for example, a quality or quantity of DNA, even using the PCR, that may still be insufficient to, protest, to produce results. Or there's a contaminated via a mixture of DNAs at, it, at one source, for example in a gang rape. DNA testing results, additional testing may be needed and findings should be interpreted in the context of other evidence in the case. Now, DNA evidence has come so far and DNA technology makes it possible to obtain results in cases from years back which have been previously tested and might have been inconclusive. Now, this can result in the identification of suspects in previously unsolvable cases or the exoneration of those wrongly convicted. But as I said, it's not all about the DNA. There's got to be a strong case to build against a suspect. Now, don't forget to subscribe to Bedroom Forensics and you can get Forensics 101 and learn about all the new products that are out there on the market. See you soon.